SpaceX has experienced enormous success in the space industry, developing technologies that for most of us seem to be out in the distant future and more suited as the destiny of science fiction writers, at least until recent times. Despite some obstacles encountered in the early testing stages, Elon Musk created the largest spacecraft in history, Starship. But what exactly is this giant, and on what journey did it embark in an effort to set a man on Mars as soon as possible? Starship, formerly codenamed BFR, Big Falcon Rocket, is a manned, reusable spacecraft designed to serve the needs of those in near-Earth orbit, as well as missions to both the Moon and Mars. This two-stage aircraft comprises a launch vehicle with a rather uncomplicated name, Super Heavy, and the spacecraft itself, Starship. Super Heavy is the first stage booster of the next generation launch system. It has a total launch mass of over 6,613,867 pounds, and employs supercooled liquid methane and liquid oxygen. CH4, LOX, as fuel. This was one of the main differences from the Falcon 9, which burns rocket fuel. Following a successful launch, the accelerator returns to the launch pad, setting down on a total of six supports. Starship represents the second stage of the system. It has an integrated payload section and will be able to deliver passengers and cargo to low Earth orbits and other planets as well as transport them between various fixed points on Earth. Previously, when a spacecraft was required to return to Earth, engineers used parachutes or made the original design of the spacecraft so that it could land on the runway. SpaceX, on the other hand, took a different approach. When the Starship is ready to land, it will enter the atmosphere at a 60-degree angle and then conduct a sort of belly flop to the surface of the Earth in a horizontal position. This return method relies entirely on the atmosphere to slow down the ship's descent. As an additional deceleration factor, four steel landing flaps are installed near the front and rear of the aircraft to control its descent. This is similar to the way a skydiver uses his arms and legs to control his freefall. Musk argues that this approach can be utilized to safely land a rocket on any surface in the solar system. Starship is a unique project because, if for nothing else, it offers to send up to 100 people into space at a time, or a cargo load weighing up to 100 tons per flight. Even the largest space shuttles cannot boast such transport capabilities. For example, this space shuttle could deliver no more than 16 tons of cargo to the ISS and only 7 people. Furthermore, it is Starship that will form the basis of the process of colonizing the Moon and Mars in the foreseeable future. The founder of SpaceX has, for a long time now, already been set on the most suitable option for the future of humanity. In his vision, people have become a space civilization and an interplanetary species, preferring not to remain an exclusively terrestrial biological species in anticipation of their imminent extinction. Elon Musk's goal is to send the first humans to Mars somewhere in the mid-2020s, and by the year 2050 to have founded the first city on the Red Planet. And if this seems like nothing more than a joke to you, think again. BFR was originally announced back in 2017, and just a year later, the project received a new name, Starship, which it still uses to this day. As a basis for the future spacecraft, Musk planned to use carbon fiber, which was very familiar for the space industry. But in 2019, he announced his decision to do away with this, stating that the spacecraft would be built of stainless steel instead. During his 2019 presentation, the billionaire talked about the unusual appearance of the ship, which from a distance resembles a classic starship from the golden age of science fiction, sporting a nose cone and landing plumage. According to Musk, he is obsessed with using steel, so he chose it as the basis for his ship. In addition to the shiny stainless steel, Starship has been coated with a thin layer of transparent refractory ceramic 
to withstand multiple temperature changes. While many people still think steel is too heavy, this is a misconception. It is actually one of the lightest designs, and according to Musk, was the best manufacturing solution. Originally, Starship prototypes used 301 stainless steel, which is a mixture of nickel, chromium, and iron. This material is extremely resilient to corrosion and is much cheaper than the carbon fiber from which most spacecraft today are made of. Think about it. While the cost of carbon fiber was already in excess of $130,000 per ton in 2020, the price of steel was a mere $2,500 per ton. As early as March of 2020, Musk had announced that some parts would be made from 304L stainless steel. This decision was due to the fact that it has an even tougher nature at low temperatures. At the same time, Musk stressed that in the future, the company intends to switch to an alloy of its own making. Among other advantages of steel, the head of SpaceX also pointed out the high melting points. In the case of aluminum or carbon fiber, engineers are limited to approximately 300 degrees Fahrenheit in a constant operating temperature, with occasional spikes of up to 350 degrees. This simply wasn't enough. Considering that Musk's plans include about 1,000 launches and landings per year, the spacecraft must be as resilient to sudden shifts in temperatures as possible. In addition to the materials, plans for the engines installed on the ship have also changed since 2019. Previously, there were six reusable Raptor engines, consuming Metalox, which is a mixture of methane and oxygen. That number will soon be increased to seven. It is also worth noting that the Raptor managed to reach a pressure of 269 bar, 3,900 psi breaking the 20-year record of the Russian RD-180 engine, capable of withstanding a pressure of 258 bar, 3,725 psi. At the same time, the physical dimensions of the Raptor do not greatly exceed SpaceX's Merlin engines installed on the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. If this trend of gradual power increase continues, the Raptor will be revolutionary in regards to space travel. The number of Raptor engines installed on the Super Heavy has also changed. Initially, 35 were installed, then this number was reduced to 31. They have since increased again, but only to 37 engines. Not all of them will be deployed for each of the upcoming missions, but according to Musk himself, it will take the force of at least 24 Raptors to send such a giant craft into space. Ironically, one of the Starship's design changes was based off the 2012 comedy The Dictator, in which the protagonist stated, round is not scary, pointy is scary. It is too round on the top, it needs to be pointy. Round is not scary, pointy is scary. Referencing the appearance of the rocket created by his engineers. The head of SpaceX said that this is why the nose of the new Starship prototypes of 2021 has become much sharper. The first prototype of the Starship system was the Starhopper Low Altitude Vehicle, the outward appearance of which resembles a steel-tipped tank rather than that of an aerodynamic rocket. SpaceX evaluated the engine's performance with four short tests back in 2019. On its first flight, Starhopper made a small jump of less than one foot, 0.984 feet, lasting only three seconds. Its last launch, however, was 500 feet. Thus, progress is apparent. Subsequent prototypes include MK-1, destroyed during tank pressure test, MK-2, abandoned due to new design, MK-3 or SN-1, destroyed during the containment, air tightness test, SN2, successful pressure test, SN3, destroyed during pressure tank test, SN4, destroyed in a static fire test, although several previous models were successful, SN5 and SN6, reached an altitude of 500 feet, thereby solidifying the success of Starhopper, SN7, purposefully destroyed during ground tests in order to collect data for subsequent test flights. SN-8 flew into airspace and performed difficult maneuvers, such as flips, 
but failed to land successfully due to the fact that the engines could not provide sufficient thrust for a successful landing. This was caused by low pressure in the methane tank. SpaceX then proceeded to test three more devices, SN9, SN10, and SN11. All of them stayed in the air for about six minutes. Nevertheless, all three experienced technical difficulties that led to either a fire or full explosion almost immediately after landing. Musk, in turn, always shared information about the problems that occurred, regularly improving the ships in order to make subsequent attempts more successful. Three prototypes that followed, SN12, SN13, and SN14, did not have time to prove themselves against any tests. In the winter of 2020, SN12 was scrapped, and both SN13 and SN14 were not even completed, after which they were also decommissioned soon after. SN15 took into account the flaws of its predecessors, reaching 33,000 feet and then landing without a hitch, barring a small fire at the base of the ship. In August 2021, the latest Starship model was officially recognized as the tallest rocket ever built. By comparison, NASA's largest rocket, the Saturn V, which was used in the legendary Apollo missions of the 1960s and 70s, stood at 363 feet versus the Starship's 395 feet. Today, the SN20 prototype is waiting in anticipation of making an orbital flight. According to the current plan, it will make a round-the-world trip, then set off the coast of Hawaii 90 minutes after launch, while the first stage of the Super Heavy rocket will return to the platform in the Gulf of Mexico after 6 minutes. SpaceX is now facing difficulties in the FAA's environmental assessment, which has halted company's plans. Until the assessment is completed, Musk's team will not be able to launch the ship. In the future, Starship will be able to deliver people and goods to points in our solar system as far out as the gas giants as Jupiter. But for the time being, the head of SpaceX has said that this is more of a long-term goal. On the other hand, everything that we have just covered was merely fantasy only two decades ago. But today, the Moon and Mars no longer seem so far off. What are your thoughts? Will Elon Musk's Starship be able to send the first ship to Mars by 2024? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave the like. And be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you can watch more content like this in the future. Thank you so much, we will see you in the next video.